text messages for the man who is definitely dope to think. Craig, it's Kirk again. Look, I totally get it. I'm not calling about the scripts this time. I'm calling to apologize. I have no excuse for what I did to your mailbox. I do not know what came over me. I don't normally have a boris feeling towards the inanimate objects. I'd offer to clean it up, but, you know, restraining order. <laughs> you know, so, uh, at any rate, I hope that we could just forget all about this and put it behind us. You're a professional, and I'm a professional, and I don't want things to get weird between us. <sighs> so, um, call me. Catch you later. The number you have dialed has been changed. and begin to wail. It's time to light the candles. It's time to chant the rites. It's time to meet the host of Good Morning Night Vale tonight. Hello, Night Vale. I'm glad you could join me on for the first installment of our newest program, Good Morning Night Vale tonight. I am your host, Robert York, and I'll be taking you through the midnight hour until the early morning as you listen to the radio station. For those of you who may remember me as Robert the Intern, shame. Shame on you all. Those of you who do not remember me, I started here over 20 years ago as an intern. Long ago, I discovered the secret to success here at the radio station, and that secret is hiding. Every day I would descend down access shaft B into the bowels of the radio station where I found a disused bathroom, an easily barricaded door. I would remain hidden until the end of my shift, upon which I would ascend to flee into the night, only to return in the morning and repeat the process. As I hid down in the subterranean labyrinth, I would, from time to time, hear the shrieks of other misfortunate interns who had stumbled upon the cyclopean monster who dwelled among the leaking steam pipes and strange phosphorus materials that pooled beneath them. As it turns out, last month, the creature had finally found my abode. Years of scurrying around the steam tunnels had sharpened my paranoia to a razor's edge. Knowing that eventually this day would come, I had the foresight to lay a cunning trap, counting on its oafish size and overconfidence. Using a sharpened leg from an abandoned vanity set, I managed to wrest the head from the shoulders of the beast, which I then carried triumphantly up access shaft B, the head, not the shoulders. The shoulders were still attached to the rest of the beast, which was very heavy. Seriously, I am over 40 years old. Two decades of cowering in a bathroom barricaded with old filing cabinets and messenger zombie children corpses has really done a number on my back. That said, I proudly displayed my trophy on high for all to witness, its dripping fluids flowing down my arms and across my chest, making my radio station intern t-shirt sticky with the biting and vaguely acidic blood of the beast. It was a cleansing rain for my world-weary soul. As it turns out, according to my contract with the radio station, should an intern survive more than 20 years of employment and defeat the steam tunnel horror in personal combat using a vanity set, he is to be rewarded with his own radio program. Seriously, I do not remember reading that when I signed the contract, but it's in there. On page 44, right after the section about how I'm never to speak ill of the radio station, and how that includes Twitter, Tumblr, reporters from other news organizations, the privacy of my own home, my own dreams, or by Verizon Thoughtgram. However, having fashioned the vanity set into a weapon was a point of contention. Because I had followed the letter of the contract, I certainly did not follow the spirit of it, you see. So for that reason, it was deemed that I would have a co-host. 
my co-host is the severed head of the cyclopean beast known as the Steamtown Horror. Now, co-host severed head is not able to speak, seeing as he no longer has any attached lungs or the means of manipulating the flow of air into or out of his mouth. However, I have become quite adept at reading lips, and I am more than qualified to relay his thoughts and his feelings as they come up. As for the format, this is a call-in show. You, the listener, call in, and we answer your questions and give advice. Of course, management has not rescinded its standing order that no caller ever be allowed to speak on the air directly. So, all of your calls will instead be transcribed and handed to me to be read. This process will be hampered by the City Council's standing ban on all writing materials. However, we'll figure out a way around that. Remember, writing is like remembering, and remembering is wrong. A public service announcement. The Sandways Whale Watchers are on a recruiting drive. They would like to remind the town that a fair number of buildings are still lit by whale oil, and until we finally get that pulsar up and running, Night Vale will still need oil. And that means we need whales. So, if you have some spare time, why not go out with the Sandways Whale Watchers and spend some time watching for these majestic creatures? They're long and supple forms. They're peaceful and ancient songs that they sing as they perform their many daily activities, such as eating grillo and mocking Japanese whaling ships by making rude comments about the sailors' ancestors. If you're lucky, you will catch sight of these giants of the deep as a portal from the Bermuda Triangle opens up. When the sun catches it just right, you can see a beautiful rainbow arch across the sky, illuminating the azure dome far above your head. It is quickly followed by the sickening thud of a whale hitting the ground at approximately terminal velocity. A double rainbow? What does it mean? It means the school gymnasium will be well lit tonight. So join the fun. Help your town. Attend the Sandways Whale Watcher Mixer this weekend and bring your appetite. You will have free cookies, desiccated whale flesh on miniature salty Kimowak rolls with Karma Clayton's famous homemade gravy and cornbread muffins. Mmm, mmm. Who doesn't love muffins? This has been a public service announcement. Listeners, we have our first call in right here. It appears to be a shout out. For those of you who are not aware, a shout out is when a private message is given over a form of public broadcast media. And this one is from a young lady named Beth to a gentleman named Cogsworth. The message is as follows. I want to burrow into your chest and lay my eggs. Now, I'm not up on teen slang these days, but I mean, it sure seems that Beth does have the hots for Cogsworth. You'll have to stay on your toes if you want to stay single, mister. Oh, my co-host, the Severed Monster Head, has a comment. Uh, let's see, he says, You are a clueless idiot. Well... I don't think Cogsworth is all that ignorant. It's difficult to understand what other people feel about us. We exist as frightened creatures, evaluating our self-worth based on what other people think about us. We have found it's best to assume that people think the worst about us, and thus we are all happily surprised when we discover that someone actually wants us for who we are. Cogsworth isn't clueless. He is just human. I assume. So, to you, Cogsworth, my advice is... Go for it! You never know where a relationship may take you. And the road not taken is the road that will haunt you. Haunt you until your dying day. Fill you with regret and poison all your future relationships as you measure them against an impossible to reach theoretical ideal that exists only in your head. I recommend dinner and a movie. Just test the waters a little. Then, if you choose to get more serious, follow with flowers, chocolates, and promises you don't intend to keep. And now a word from our sponsor. All hail, all hail the glow cloud. Bow down in supplication to the glow cloud. Touch your forehead to the glass. Press it hard. Stare. Gaze with wonder. Tremble in fear at the low, low, low prices within. The glow cloud taxidermy emporium. We are slashing our prices on taxidermy equipment and supplies. We are slashing our prices on petrified animal carcasses. 
We are slashing everything. Our prices are insane. Our prices have chewed off their own manipulative digits down to twitching bloody stumps as they thrust their upper appendages repeatedly into their gibbering, chattering, spasming, consumption orifice. Consume. 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 Support small town businesses. Think globally. Act locally. Shop the Glow Cloud Taxidermy Emporium. Now. This has been a word from our sponsor. A question from a listener. The question is, when are you on? I am unable to find any listening or even what day of the week you will be broadcasting on. Listener, do not worry. Those of you who should know will know. And those who do not know will not know. Unless you find out, then we will change what those who do know think they know, and then no one will know. You will know when you know when you suddenly stand up straight. If you are not already standing, your back will become rigid, and your head will list to one side like a capsizing watercraft that is perched capriciously between just enough buoyancy to stay afloat and slipping beneath the waves to a dark and watery grave. Your tongue will dart in and out of your mouth like a South American lizard with Parkinson's disease. Then, and only then, will you know when to tune into this broadcast. But typically, we're on nights between midnight and 5 a.m. A message from the U.S. Postal Service. The local post office, which you may remember is only staffed by strange cloth-laden figures who do nothing but stand in place and spin rapidly, has announced a change in their offered product, Return Receipt Requested. From now on, if you are not present when the package is delivered to your home, you will be left on your doorstep. A large vulture will be released, and it will ascend into the sky and circle slowly about, far too high for the unaided human eye to perceive. When you, or anyone for that matter, touches the package, the vulture will descend rapidly and strike like fiery vengeance from an offended demiurge. The vulture will then tear out a liver, only one, then return to the post office where it, your liver, will be mailed back to the original sender as confirmation that the package was received. This has been done for your convenience and to improve your postal service experience. If you wish to avoid this, we suggest you be home to receive all packages. Also, have your own ink pen ready to sign. Wear black only, as red ink does not photocopy well. Seriously, why do they even sell red ink anyways? What are they trying to hide? What do they not want us to know? How can we trust them? How can we trust? Do not trust. Send all packages. Return receipt requested. U.S. Postal Service. We don't go postal anymore. The pain is simply too intense. This has been a message from the U.S. Postal Service. An update on Wheatgate. The ban on wheat and wheat byproducts has taken a toll on Night Vale businesses. Several businesses have learned to adapt, such as Big Rico's, whereas other businesses have simply gone belly up. I, of course, speak of the closing of Wheat Co. I'm afraid it's no longer a rumor, folks. The company has finally closed its doors for the last time. Wheat Co., creators of centralized wheat, produced and installed pneumatically delivered faucet-based wheat systems so you could have wheat and wheat byproducts available on tap, conveniently located right at your kitchen sink. Alas, despite bailout money from a vague yet threatening government agency, WeCo has been unable to retool themselves for any other pneumatically delivered product. Attempts to convert to other substances such as mashed potatoes, iron filings, ectoplasm, and deleted for security reasons have all met with either insurmountable technical problems or lukewarm customer interest. The CEO was quoted as saying, we just can't get enough interest in the new products. 
We think it's because we can't get a viral video thing going. The firm that we hired to handle our rebranding apparently used an actual virus and wiped out our entire target demographic. Our target demographic were people who will lick anything at least once, and people who don't know how to read a credit card statement, and thus pay their monthly bills without verifying if any of the charges are legit. The closing of WeCo has resulted in the layoff of the entire workforce of 12 individuals and one collective consciousness. They can expect to have up to six months of unemployment insurance. You have six months. Six months. You have to find a job in six months. This has been an update on Weekday. This just in. The storm drain off Elm has exploded for no apparent reason. Nobody was hurt. The sheriff's secret police were on the scene and everything is fine. Don't worry about it. Everything's cool. And if you'd like everything to remain cool, the sheriff's secret police would like to remind everyone that the secret policeman's ball is coming up next month. If you wish to buy tickets, just pick up a phone and say, Secret Policeman's Ball Ticket, please, and state the number you wish to buy. A secret policeman will arrive to handle the transaction, but he's currently running out of ones and fives, so please, nothing larger than a 20, exact change preferred. They are not accepting credit cards this year because the credit card companies are charging way too much for the transaction fee. People who purchase five or more tickets will be given a sticker that they can put on their car. That sticker will be a picture of a man with a black bag over his head inside a circle with a line through it. This will not actually stop any of the secret police from putting a black bag over your head and taking you to an undisclosed location that we all know is actually the abandoned mine outside of town. But it will give you a false sense of security. And hey, that's just, just as good as the real thing these days. Well... Looking at the clock, it's been a long night. I don't know about you, but I think it's time for a coffee break. I'm gonna drink my coffee in the blackest mood. I gotta taste the blackness from my head to my roots But the root of my belly, it ain't strong enough The root of my belly, it ain't strong enough I'd like to drink my espresso strong and hot Pour some white cloud or sugar I do not Cause the root of my coffee It ain't black enough No, the root of my coffee It ain't black enough No, the root of my coffee It ain't black enough No I want it straight
well. By the side of the light that creeps into the broadcast booth, fighting against the darkness in spurts and thrusts across the floor, I can see that our time has almost come to an end. Like a cat that has jumped into my lap, the time has come for me to put you on the floor. Unlike the cat in the men's bathroom that stubbornly refuses to descend and remains hovering in the air at all times. I swear it's like somebody strapped a piece of buttered toast to his back. So, I leave you with this thought. As you struggle to wipe the sand from your eyes and the nightmares flee from your cerebral cortex to your lizard hind brain of primordial fears where they will subtly influence your choices throughout the day yet somehow allow you to maintain the illusion of free will. Spiders. Large, hairy spiders. And as always, have a good morning, Night Vale. Good Morning Night Vale Tonight is based on characters and locations from the podcast Welcome to Night Vale, which is the intellectual property of commonplace books. If you haven't heard Welcome to Night Vale yet, you definitely need to go listen to them. Right now, I'll wait. Back already? Good. The background music was from Disparation, stuff that came with my computer, and various free-use sound bites from across the internet. This episode's coffee break was The Root of My Belly by Jews TVD. The episode was written by, produced, and read by me, Bob.